So you welcome this is the prophetic guy. I bet you God wants you to understand the word of God. Yes, yes. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. The Bible says that he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Stay tuned and subscribe for more. God bless you. Praise the Lord, and welcome to the Prophetic Guide Lessons, written and produced by Apostle Ezekiel Melchizedek. Hallelujah. I'm the personal apostle Ezekiel Melchizedek. Now today we're talking about the prophet, the mouthpiece of God. The prophet as the mouthpiece of God. Now let's take a Bible reading from Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. Now the Bible says, And by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Hallelujah. So, now, is that all throughout the Old Testament Bible, the prophetic ministry is what God used to preserve the nation of Israel from the world of idolatry. Anytime the nation of Israel went astray in idol worship, God brought in the prophet to direct them into the pathway of righteousness and deliverance from the devil's oppression. However, the ministry of the prophet did not just end with the Old Testament, but it also entered into the New Testament Bible, where we see the prophetic gifts operating in an advanced form through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So now, we're going to take it in a point-by-point -point explanation. Number one, God speaks. God speaks. The reason for the prophetic is because God speaks, more so because God is alive. However, we must understand that God has already spoken through the Holy Scriptures to all and sundry. For in Mark 13, verse 37, Yeshua said, And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Therefore we know that the Bible is a bona fide word of God. That is still speaking to you and I and the generations yet unborn. Furthermore, the word of God affirms, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John chapter 1 verse 1. The first prophecy is the word of God that is written in the Bible. The scripture declares, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. So the entire Bible is full of prophecy from Genesis to Revelation. Hallelujah. So we go to the next point. Say, God speaks to people. God speaks, but not just to anything or anyhow. God speaks to people expressly about God himself, about people, about a plan, or the will of God, about the schemes of the devil. God reveals his laws, ways, and means to people, and his intent of deliverance unto the people. There are three main things that God speaks to people about, the promises, the laws, in the prophecies of God. Why the prophetic is needed is because it is the medium through which God speaks to us. God can choose to speak to his people individually without using any prophet. This is when the Lord sees that such individual Christian is matured enough to handle the voice of the Lord. Many a times the prophet speaks to confirm what God has already spoken in his word. God's word can be misunderstood, ignored, or neglected by the ordinary child of God. However, it is the prophet that will enforce the word of God to the people of God. Because God speaks to his children, there is a need to confirm what the Lord is saying as the prophet comes in to deliver a message of confirmation. Hallelujah. So we go to the third point, number three, God speaks to prophets. God speaks to 
the prophets as his highest priority. This means that God speaks to the prophet when it comes to matters of relevance. The children of God can rely on the ministry of the prophet to hear from God. For instance, the scriptures say, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Amos 3, 7. When God speaks to the prophets, it is a secret thing that is usually revealed to the prophets. What God reveals to the prophet is called revelation. This means it was something that was formally covered, but it is not revealed to the prophets. The revelation can be for a dual purpose. Either it is meant for the prophet's ears only, or it is something that the prophet has to declare to a child or children of God. For instance, the scriptures affirm, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the works of this law. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29. Now let me take that scripture again. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the ways of this law. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. What God reveals to the prophet to tell the believers is called the revealed things. That is what is commonly referred to as revelation. Hallelujah. So we go to number four, point number four. It says, God speaks through the prophets. So God speaks through the prophets. Now, God's ultimate plan in speaking to the prophet is to get in contact with the people of God. God speaks through the prophets. He speaks through the prophet. So God's ultimate plan in speaking to the prophet is to get in contact with the people of God. So God's desire is to speak through the prophet to the people. There are incidents in the scriptures when the prophet Moses said that God should speak to the people in person. And then God came down to speak to the Israelites. But they could not behold the glory of God in the mount, neither could they stand the dreadful presence of God nor the tenderest voice of the Most High. Now look at the Exodus chapter 20, verse 18 to 19. And all the people saw the tenderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Exodus 20. Verse 18 to 19. At this point, the people realized that they could not stand in the presence of the Lord. And for that matter, they could not listen to the frightful voice of God. So they requested that they would rather listen to the prophet Moses speaking to them and God talking to the prophet than to hear the voice of God directly. All right, so now let's look at Ezra chapter 20, verse 18 to 20. See the reply of Moses. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. Ezra 20, verse 18 to 20. So God speaks to us, so that we will acknowledge his presence in our lives, and do his bidding out of reverence for God. God speaks to the prophets, to his people, as much as he wants to get the attention of the people. Hallelujah. Now let's go to point number five. God speaks to all. God speaks to all. God desires to speak to every human being on earth. And for that matter, the word of the Lord must be made available to all and sundry. Every prophet is supposed to speak the word to his generation. As much as possible, God wants all people, race and caliber, to hear the word of God. This is why God uses the prophet as a mouthpiece to speak to as many people as possible. Jesus told us to preach the gospel to all creation. 
And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, verse 15. Let me take that again. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, the prophetic is the medium to get the message to the world in these end times. The prophetic is the medium to get the message to the world in these end times. This means that every prophetic message must attract people to Christ. Any prophecy that does not honor God's word but contradict the word of God is false. For instance, if a prophet tells a married lady that God said he should sleep with her in order to impregnate her, this is not from the Lord of prophecies, which is Yeshua. Point number six, prophets are God's mouthpiece. Prophets are God's mouthpiece. The prophet then becomes God's mouthpiece through which the word of God is delivered to the people of God. Mouthpiece means God talks through him. He says what God is saying. He does what God is doing. Now, that means a prophet cannot speak on his own. He only says what God is saying. If God is silent, the prophet is silent. If God is talking, then the prophet will also be talking. Now, let's look at John chapter 5, verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. John chapter 5, verse 19. That is what makes the prophet the mouthpiece of God. God intentionally puts his words into the mouth of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah will only say what God is saying, nothing less, no more. Hallelujah. So that is it. Now, let's look at it very critically. He said, the genuine prophet does not speak unless God is speaking. He only speaks what God is saying. And he says what God is do saying. This is because the mouthpiece of the Lord. This is because he is the mouthpiece of the Lord. He is not on his own. Neither does he operate alone. For instance, God to Jeremiah, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. So you get it now? The genuine prophet does not speak unless God is speaking. He only speaks what God is saying. And he says what God is saying. This is because he is the mouthpiece of God. He is not on his own, neither does he operate alone. For instance, God told Jeremiah, that's Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, he says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Jeremiah 1 9. So we get it. That is what makes the prophet the mouthpiece of God. God intentionally put his words into the mouth of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah will only say what God is saying. Nothing less, no more. Yeah, that's it. Now we go to point number seven. Prophets confirm the word of God is important. One thing about the prophetic is that it accompanies confirmation. What that means is, that is to say that Anytime the prophet speaks, there is a token, confession, sign, or a wonder that confirms that the message is really the word of God. How should we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that had him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with David's miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. That's Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Now let's read that scripture again. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that had him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. 
These confirmations are mainly miracles that prove that God exists and His word is real. So the prophetic, the, the God, the prophets confirm the word of God, making sure that there is a sign or wonder, or miracle, or a power demonstrated behind it, power of healings and deliverance and lights. That is it. So that brings us to the end of today's prophetic guide lessons. I hope that you have been blessed and you have learned something. I want to pray with you. Father, bless these viewers. Let grace be upon them. Release prophetic grace, prophetic anointing, prophetic power. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. Amen. This has been Apostle Ezekiel. Make sure you follow us or you subscribe to our channels so you can always be blessed. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hello, you're welcome. This is the Prophetic Guide. I bet you God wants you to understand the Word of God. Yes, that's First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. The Bible says that he that prophesies, speaking unto men, to edification and exhortation and comfort. Stay tuned and subscribe for more. God bless you. Praise the Lord, and welcome to the Prophetic Guide Lessons, written and produced by Apostle Ezekiel Melchizedek.